Hi, everybody. I hope you've had a fantastic festive season. Happy New Year. Welcome to another Chats with Children into 2021. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Jeffrey Silver, who is the Director of Product Development from Adeptrix Corporation. And today we're going to be talking about BAMS, which stands for Bead Assisted Mass Spectrometry. Uh, so, but before we do that, uh, let's introduce our guest, Jeffrey. Happy New Year. How are you, my friend? Uh, very good. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Happy New Year to you. I appreciate um, the opportunity to, uh, for this interview and to share with everyone um, news about BAMS and, and what's happened with uh, Adeptrix over the past uh, couple of years. Fantastic. Well, look, um, before we start talking about BAMS and what it means and what it is, perhaps you tell people a little bit about Adeptrix who are not familiar with the company and also your role within that. Sure. Um, Adeptrix has been around since about 2010. Um, and it, it really didn't focus on, on the, the key app until about 2015, which is targeted proteomics. Um, I got involved with it uh, at about that time uh, because of my history. I'll sort of uh, get into that in a little bit. Um, but uh, Adeptrix is focused on, on creating tools uh, for easy to use uh, targeted proteomic applications, coupling immuno affinity capture right. with um, uh, MALDI mass spectrometry uh, for sort of a high definition uh, targeted proteomics applications. Um, in terms of my background, um, I was at Waters for in early 2000, 2001-ish, uh, doing, spending most of my time doing electrospray, uh, proteomics, uh, uh, working on discovery-based protein analysis, um, and uh, on, on technology that is now uh, being used um, uh, for a, a lot of discovery-based uh, proteomics called SWATH. It, it, at the time, it was data-independent analysis. Um, and then from there, um, because of my interest in targeted proteomics and post-translational modifications, I went and joined a company called Cell Signaling uh, Technology out of, and they were, they were, uh, they were out of Danvers, um, to really get a, a better appreciation of uh, post-translational modifications and uh, analyzing them with mass spectrometry, coupling um, antibodies for that type of work. And um, it, I was there for about eight years leading a group that did um, uh, service work using those reagents to carry out those types of studies for pharma, biotech, and academia. Brilliant. So what is BAMS? Tell me what it is. So BAMS, as you said earlier, um, stands for Bead Assisted Mass Spectrometry. And what we've done is we've, um, we've created a technology that, that, uh, where we uh, uh, coat individual beads with antibodies. And uh, these beads act as molecular tweezers to capture the target analytes of interest um, so that, and, and enrich them on the bead itself that can then be used to deposit the material onto a solid surface for mass spec or MALDI analysis. And by doing so, what we've done is we've eliminated um, the complicated LC front end of, of the mass spec and now LCMS uh, workflow and uh, are using affinity capture with MALDI MS for, uh, for targeted proteomics. Right, okay. And what are then the challenges around targeted protein analysis and what methods have researchers historically used to address them? So the challenges are that um, at least what we've seen and, and, and what, what, what people can easily uh, find uh, on, on, uh, with, with historic data and, and public um, proteomic uh, uh, data is that um, proteins exist um, in multiple forms. Any given protein, for the, in, the, in the majority of cases, um, don't exist in, in a single form. And what I mean by that is, uh, as we all know, protein is a linear sequence of amino acids, right? But that protein doesn't exist as just 
a linear portion, a, a, a sequence of amino acids. There can be truncated forms of that protein. There can be um, post-translational modifications like phosphorylation, acetylation, methylation. These, are, these act as switches and dials that really modulate uh, the activity, the function of proteins, where they're localized, um, uh, what the activity is, whether it's inactive or active, um, whether it's in the nucleus or in the cytosol. And so a given protein can exist in multiple forms. Um, and so um, what, what BAMS allows for is us to target specific locations of the protein and look at the that's within that region and be able to monitor those different uh, proteoforms um, in response to different perturbations, whether it be uh, comparing normal and diseased tissues, or whether it being uh, looking at the response of a cell um, with a particular drug and how it reacts to how the protein or the modulation of that protein uh, responds to the presence of that drug. Um, in terms of what technologies are used today, typically uh, people are using um, ELISA, based methods, um, uh, which are, are very uh, uh, popular assays. They're easy to use. Challenge, uh, the, 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 the challenge there is that um, they are typically uh, a, a, a single, a, a low resolution assay. Um, and what, what, MAL, what BAMS does is it couples affinity capture with a high resolution detection so that you can see all these different um, uh, features within within the context of a particular protein. Right, brilliant. And what other applications then can you apply BAMS to? So we've uh, with 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 COVID uh, the, this 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 year, um, we had pre previous to this, we had been building up uh, reagents and assays to areas like oncology. Uh, looking at specific phosphorylation on, on specific proteins, um, uh, acetylation, acetylation, methylation. Um, we've been looking at uh, neurology, um, looking at degradation products um, in beta amyloid, uh, looking at um, uh, proteins like tau that's associated with Alzheimer's disease and how how tau and hyperphosphorylated tau is associated with that disease and designing assays to be able to monitor those different features. Uh, earlier this year with COVID, um, we decided that we could um, adapt or the method to be able to look at virus, at, 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 at viruses at COVID as a way to detect uh, the virus. And this was simply done by um, because the reagents were available, the affinity reagents were available, um, we took uh, uh, affinity reagents to spike protein and coupled them to the bead as a way to capture uh, the spike protein. And the reason why we focused initially on the spike protein was that the spike protein is on the surface of that virus. So it provides a mechanism to be able to capture the intact virus and and, and be able to place that material on the surface for MALDI analysis. Okay. Um, there's an instrument or a platform out there call, uh, that Brooker um, has created uh, called the Biotyper, which is a tool for microbiology for identifying microbes. And by uh, the way they do that is they grow um, colonies and then transfer the colony by hand with a toothpick or, or a, 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 a sterile uh, um, applicator and transfer it onto the surface of the multi plate and, and literally um, shoot it with the laser and obtain a fingerprint for that, um, for that microbe and compare that against a library to identify the microbe. The challenge with viruses is you can't grow them up. You can't, you, you can't grow them up as a colony that you can then physically transfer over to the plate. And so what BAMS does is it acts as that, star, that, 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 that device that's able to capture, concentrate, and deliver uh, the material onto the surface of the plate, whether it be uh, the protein component itself in the, uh, in the liquid biopsy or the, in, the, um, the intact virus uh, 
uh, itself onto the surface of, of the plate for analysis. And so that's been something that we've um, been working on. Uh, we've expanded it beyond the spike protein to include nucleocapsid. And because BAMS is able to do multiplexing, multiplexing meaning we can target many different proteins just by putting using different beads with different affinity reagents, we can carry out an assay that can, uh, a platform that can be used for virology to look at many different types of, of viruses. Right, well that leads to a nice stage. So where do you see the future of BAMS then? Um, the future of BAMS, in terms of what the, our vision, in terms of what we hope BAMS to, to do, it's really to put, um, proteomics in the hands of many more scientists, biologists, um, and not to be, uh, feel the need that you have to have, uh, be an expert in mass spectrometry, because what we've done is we've, we've, we've built the technology on something that's very familiar, uh, uh, uh magnetic bead, uh, capture with MALDI MS, which in essence is a scanner. In, in this format serves as a scanner because um, when we carry out and characterize the reagents, uh, Adeptrix identifies and creates the reagent to say that this bead uh, enriches for this protein and generates this mass. And so that can be coded in software so that people don't have to look under the hood and look at mass spec data. The software can simply tell you um, what it is you've detected and do the quantitation as well. Um, and so the, the goal really is to create an easy to use targeted application uh, to enable um, targeted proteomics for biologists. And uh, in terms of the future, really to expand it be, uh, in a number of different areas and, and have that driven by customer use and customer um, excitement about the technology. So oncology is an area that we see a lot of growth potential. Neurology, we've got a number of different collaborators uh, that are in the neurology space that see the value of being able to monitor these different proteoforms and also expand the content to include other um, protein targets that are, that are needed to, to um, uh, stratify uh, different neurological disorder disorders and um, uh, so we'll be building up content on, on that. Epigenetics is another area that's really exciting because um, uh, histones, the tails of those histones are dressed with a lot of these post-translation modifications, these switches and dials, right? And, and we can capture those pieces and look at all those different features and correlate that to some to developmental biology, uh, disease biology, uh, drug treatments. And so that's something that we've, uh, we're really excited about um, because the reagents that are out there that we're working with are, are very good and it really exposes a lot of um, interesting characteristics about those, uh, the histones. Brilliant. So finally, because I've been asking everybody this question, if you're looking back at 2020, What's one word you'd use to describe the year that's just gone? And um, looking ahead, how do you see 2021 developing? Uh, uh, I guess the, the word that comes to mind is perseverance, really. Um, you know, we it's been a tough year. It was a tough year. Um, but, you know, with that, we really just focused on what we needed to do to um, refine the, the application, get the message out there through um, our, our, our relationships with our, our collaborators, um, participate in these virtual conferences that was uh, not quite the same, but we still you know, um, pushed through and, and communicated that information. We published on the work as well. Um, and so um, you know, we're, we're, we're happy with the progress that we made. And with regard to 2021, um, because of that perseverance, that hard work, that focus, um, it really has led to a, an exciting um, announcement that will happen soon. I, and unfortunately, I can't say it at the, at the time because it's not, it's not released, but uh, we do have a major um, uh, investor uh, partner who's been sort of uh, with us 
uh, for a while watching the development of the technology and we're excited uh, to have them on board with us uh, to help uh, uh, introduce this technology to, to more people um, and help us spread the news about BAMS. Brilliant. Well, and I'll say to viewers that uh, well, as of this recording, that announcement has been made, hence the reason why it's not coming on the video. But if the announcement is or has been made by the time the video goes live, then the link will be below the video or above the video, I should say, in the actual post. You'll be able to click on that and see what that announcement was. So a little teaser in the video that you can then click <laughs> on the link. From the <laughs> that shows how live this recording is. So there you go. <laughs> and, and also, if you want to know more about BAMS, um, where can they get more information and find out more? Uh, we've done, uh, you, can, you can find more about BAMS by going to the Adeptrix website, www.adeptrix.com. And there's a resources tab on the company website that has announcements, posters, publications, um, uh, tech notes, application notes. Um, and there's also a contact us page um, that uh, you can fill out and, and we're happy to follow up with the conversation and provide you with uh, more information about the technology. Great, and as always to save you guys all having to write everything down, the links as Jeffrey's just described, will be again above the video to save you having to do all of that hard work. So I'll put those links in for you to save you doing the effort. And, and I'm sure Jeffrey won't mind if you've got any questions based on what Jeffrey's talked about today, then feel free to put them in the comments section as well below the video, because it's always great to hear what people have thoughts about this technology and the interview that we've done. And I'm sure Jeffrey will be happy to answer them, or you can, I'm sure, message him directly on LinkedIn as well. Absolutely. So, Jeffrey, what I say is thank you very much for taking time out uh, to talk to me today. It's a really interesting subject, great technology. So um, I wish you and the company lots and lots of success and a wonderful 2021. So, and also obviously your family and your loved ones. Thank you so uh, much. Really appreciate it. No, and I, I really do. Thank you very much for taking time to talk to me. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, please like, comment below the video because it's great to know what people think about these videos so please get involved and engage it'd be great to know what your thoughts are um, and as always as it is the start of the year i wish you and your loved ones a fantastic 2021 a happy healthy and successful 2021 and as always until next time stay well stay positive stay safe thanks a lot bye-bye